So, we have a Citizenship Act in this country. It recognizes citizenship by birth, citizenship by descent, citizenship by registration, citizenship by naturalization, and citizenship by incorporation of territory. These are These are universal, but I'll be very brief. These are universal principles. Now this government is introducing a new category called citizenship by arbitrary executive fiat. And is asking this parliament to support the government in passing what is patently an unconstitutional law. My friends have spoken about it, others will speak about it. We are elected representatives of the people. The Constitution has asked us, in the first instance, to judge the constitutionality of a bill. We can't pronounce on the constitutionality, but we have a responsibility to pass what is constitutional. Not all of us are lawyers. In fact, not all of us should be lawyers. We should be from every walk of life. And from every walk of life, we must bring our collective wisdom and common sense to say, is this constitutional or not? What are we doing in this house? What we did in the other house and what we are doing in this house is abdicate our primary responsibility in favor of another of the three entities and organs of the Constitution. What we are doing, you're pushing the issue to the lap of the judges. You think it will stop here? It will not stop here. It will eventually go to the judges. And the judges are respectable people, but they're unelected My judges. Unelected judges and unelected lawyers will ultimately decide whether what we do is constitutional or not. This is a slap on the face of parliament. Parliamentarians are being asked to do something unconstitutional and then the baby is passed on to the judiciary and in the judiciary, lawyers and judges will decide what you have done is constitutional or not. Knowing this is unconstitutional, I'm afraid this government is ramming through this bill in order to advance its Hindutva agenda. This is a sad day. Thankfully, they're not amending the constitution. They're only making a law. And I'm absolutely confident and absolutely clear in my mind this law will be struck down. Sir, I have a few questions. And I want to know who in the government found answers to these questions. If the law department has advised answers to these questions, please ask the Honorable Home Minister to lay the opinion of the law ministry on the table of the House. If it is the Home Ministry itself, in its wisdom found the answers to the question, let us see the final note placed by the secretary before the home minister. If it is the attorney general who has been consulted, the constitution has a provision to invite the attorney general. Please call the attorney general to this house. We'll ask him these questions. But somebody has to take responsibility for the answers to these questions. These questions are well known. Let me read it very rapidly. One, how do you group three countries Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Bangladesh, and leave out the other neighbors? Two, how do you identify only six religious groups, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi, Christian, and leave out others like Ahmadiyas, Hazaras, Rohingyas? <coughs> three, Abrahamic religions are three, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Yes. Why have you included Christianity and left the, left the other two? Four, why have you excluded Sri Lankan Hindus and Bhutanese Christians? Look at the exclusionary, inclusionary hyphenation. Sri Lanka is excluded, Hindus are included. Bhutan is excluded, Christians are included. When you hyphenate, the effect is Sri Lankan Hindus are excluded, 
Bhutanese Christians are excluded. This exclusionary, inclusionary hyphenation is beyond common sense and logic. Five, why only religious persecution? Are people not persecuted for political reasons? Linguistic? Are people not persecuted on linguistic grounds? Are people not perse persecuted by unleashing internal wars against them? Why only religious persecution? Why not every kind of persecution? Six. Does or does not Article 14 of the uh, does or does not the bill violate the three fundamental elements of Article 14 of the Constitution? First, equality before law. Unequals cannot be treated as equals. Two, unreasonable classification or irrational classification. And then there's a third element which most people forget. Judge-made laws added a third element. Even if unequals are not treated as equal, or equals are treated unequally, even if the classification is reasonable, it can be struck down on the ground that it's arbitrary. Arbitrariness writ large on the face of this bill. Now, I want to know who gave answers to these questions. Please let us have the answers. Why are parliamentarians being told, you will not give answers to these questions, go to the court and find answers. Let us have answers to the question. Let somebody take responsibility for the answers and say, yes, the Attorney General of India has answered these questions and said, these are our answers and therefore this bill is valid. I dare the government to lay the opinion of the law department. I dare the government to invite the Attorney General to this house to answer our questions. So what we are doing today is wrecking the constitution from within. A small part of the constitution is sought to be wrecked and demolished by this insidious bill. Fortunately, fortunately, we have three organs of the state. The executive is complicit. The legislature is being invited to collaborate. Hopefully, the judiciary will strike it down and we will save India and the idea of India. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.